Hello, and thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our presentation on Gorilla Glass 4, aka GG4, a product of Corning Incorporated. Research and presentation by Joshua Turp, Tristan Watkins, and Paul Neaman. Corning Incorporated was founded in 1851. Its headquarters is currently located in Corning, New York. The chairman, CEO, and president is currently Wendell P. Weeks. Corning Incorporated pulls in a revenue of roughly $10.2 billion with a combined total assets of nearly $28.5 billion. Corning Incorporated employs nearly 34,000 employees. At a simple level, the most common fundamental constituent of glass is silica. Silicon dioxide, or SiO2, which is sand in a pure form. Silica has a very high melting temperature of 1,723 degrees Celsius, or 3,133 degrees Fahrenheit, and a very high viscosity, which results in the material being difficult to work with. The most common way to decrease the glass transition temperature of silica is to add sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, aka soda. However, with the addition of soda, glass becomes water-soluble, which is typically an unwanted trait. To make the compound more chemically durable, calcium oxide, CaO, aka lime, which is obtained from limestone usually, magnesium oxide, MgO, and aluminum oxide, A2O3, are blended in with silica soda glass mixture. This entire compound results in what is known as soda lime glass with approximately 74% silica by volume. Soda lime glass is the most commonly produced type of glass in the world. No matter what type of glass you have, there are a lot of microscopic defects in the form of cracks in the material. We currently do not have any way of eradicating these defects from the glass. These defects result in significantly weakened mechanical properties. If glass could be made with fewer or even zero defects, the material would be unbelievably strong. However, since this is not currently possible, we turn to treatments of glass to increase its strength. A particular type of ion exchange, called high ion exchange, aka HIE, is used to increase the strength of the glass. Sodium ions in the glass are exchanged with potassium ions from the molten bath of potassium nitrate producing alkali aluminosilicate glass. Since the potassium ions are larger than the sodium ions they are replacing, residual compressive stresses develop on the surface. This is the desired effect which gives alkali aluminosilicate glass their superior strength to soda lime glass. If the HIE process is performed long enough, almost all of the sodium ions will be exchanged with potassium ions, However, to achieve the desired results, this process only needs to take place on the surface of the glass. Ion exchange begins first at the outermost layer and works its way into the material. Defects and damages that are introduced to the surface of the glass, even alkali aluminosilicate glass, after it is formed, significantly reduce the strength of the formed part. Numerous companies Firms utilize HIE-treated glass because of its increased strength. However, Corning goes another step further, which is what separates Gorilla Glass from all of the HIE glasses on the market. Corning has patented a proprietary method of adding a classified treatment to the surface of alkali aluminosilicate glass that gives it excellent resistance to post-forming defects such as chips, scratches, and cracks. As we already know, glass already has numerous defects in it, so being able to resist adding more defects is a valuable characteristic. Following this slide is a video explaining the HIE process and the results. When we bend one of the microscope slides in this test unit, what's actually happening is the top of the slide is in compression. You can see the lines move closer together here, and the bottom of the slide is in tension. Now, Glass, like most brittle materials, can handle the compression just fine. It's actually the tension that's a big problem. And the reason is that all pieces of glass in the world have microscopic defects in them, uh, tiny little cracks. And when we bend the piece like this, those little cracks propagate because they're being pulled apart by these tension forces. Let me show you with a piece of packing tape. 
if I pull on the tape like this, you know, I can feel it stretching a bit, but it's certainly not breaking. It's, it's quite strong. However, if I introduce a defect just by slicing it a little bit with a pair of scissors so that there's a, a cut in it now, you can see the defect, and then I just pull on it, there's no strength at all. And you could say, yeah, but the material strength, the plastic of the tape is still as strong as it always was. I just added that defect. But remember, in materials like glass, there are a huge number of defects in all pieces of glass that you'll encounter in the world. They're distributed throughout the material. So it's actually the size and the number of the defects that determine how strong a piece of glass is. If we could somehow make a piece of glass that truly had no defects whatsoever, it would be about a hundred times stronger or more than most glass that we encounter in the world. So if we want to make a piece of glass stronger, what can we do? As it turns out, with current technology, for a given size of, of glass, we actually can't reduce the number of defects. We can treat them almost as a material property. The defects in the glass are one and the same. So what else can we do? Well, we identified that compression is easy for glass to handle, but tension is a problem because it pulls open those, those defects and causes a, a failure. So if we could somehow eliminate the tension force, then we could effectively make the material stronger. And there's a clever way to do this with a chemical process. Most common pieces of glass in the world have had sodium added to it to lower its melting temperature. So pure silicon dioxide is uh, great, but it melts at such a high temperature it's difficult to work with. So we add sodium oxide in addition to lots of other things to lower the melting temperature. So here's a, a diagram of what that might look like. This is a slab of glass here and the small circles inside are sodium atoms. And this chemical trick involves submerging the piece of glass in pot a potassium salt. So these larger circles are potassium atoms. And through the natural process of diffusion, some of the potassium atoms will take the place of the sodium atoms in the piece of glass. So what's happening here is these larger potassium atoms are being shoved into the spaces where there used to be just a very small sodium atom. And the effect is that we've basically shoved the glass, put the glass in compression by jamming these larger atoms inside of it. Now this process happens at a temperature lower than the glass softening point. So the glass is still hard when this is happening. And as we're shoving in these larger atoms, the glass is becoming increasingly uh, put into compression. However, the center of the glass is not affected by this process uh, as quickly because this is like a diffusion process. And so it takes a while for these potassium atoms to work their way into the glass. So if we cancel the process after a certain amount of time, the center of the glass will not have this effect at all and the edges will, um, will be in compression. So after the treatment, what we have is something like this, where the edges of the piece of glass are in compression and the center of the glass is actually in tension because of all those extra atoms that we jammed in around the periphery. And this is true around the edges too, but I'm just showing it in one direction. So later when we load the piece in bending, the top gets to be uh, even higher in compression. Uh, the center is still in tension, but the bottom layer, which would normally be in tension in a bending situation like this, is now either neutral or at least it's offset quite a bit. Uh, because of that residual compression is sort of canceling out the tension that would be created by this loading scenario. So we've effectively strengthened the piece of glass by pre-loading it in compression. We were able to get rid of some of that tension loading. Another way to think about this is that the compression that we've added to this edge of the glass helps close the cracks. So when we put this in bending, this crack here, the defect, doesn't shoot up through the glass and cause breakage because we're in compression here and it's actually sealing the crack shut. As a result of the HIE chemical process, the strength of the material is significantly increased, specifically against bending and flexure forces. Corning patented a proprietary process which protects the glass from further damage from everyday wear and tear, and also protects it against scratching and small surface impact forces in which makes Gorilla Glass a rare breed. As mentioned earlier, all glass already has tons of microscopic defects or cracks. When the surface of the material is dented, scratched, or cracked even slightly, that spot is at much greater risk of failure. 
One way corning helps prolong the life of its glass is by reducing the chance that the defects will be introduced to the surface during its lifetime. Corning runs GG4 through extensive engineering tests that replicate or resemble the real-world abuse that mobile devices and other GG4 applications receive throughout their life. Gorilla Glass has excellent scratch resistance. As seen in the graph, Gorilla Glass 4 has a greater mean failure load than Gorilla Glass 3 at every thickness. GG4 also allows for the reduction in thickness and therefore weight, because similar and sometimes slightly greater loads can be carried with a thinner piece. As seen in the chart, 0.4 millimeters of GG4 can withstand greater loads than 0.55 millimeters and 0.7 millimeters of GG3. Also, since GG4 normally comes in a thickness from 0.4 mm up to 1 mm, it is logical to assume that a 1 mm thick piece of GG4 would withstand some serious abuse. GG4 is currently used in an estimated 3 billion devices worldwide. That means there are 3 billion devices around the world that are better able to withstand everyday abuse than previous generations of screens. Corning did extensive follow-up on their previous iteration, GG3. The biggest complaint was that even though it was able to withstand scratches, dents, and chips, it was relatively easy to crack the screen simply by dropping it from your hand while walking along the sidewalk. So as they developed and researched their product for its fourth generation, they focused on strengthening GG4's ability to resist shattering from a 1 meter drop height. Following this slide will be a video demonstrating this. Corning Gorilla Glass is the most trusted cover glass on the planet, helping to protect billions of devices. But the reality is, displays can still break if dropped, and it's your number one gripe. We understand your frustration and set out to find a solution. Corning's top scientists performed thousands of hours of failure mode analysis to understand exactly how and why cover glass breaks when dropped. We dropped hundreds of devices on many different surfaces, collecting data and samples in the field, and painstakingly studying it all back in the lab. What did we find? That the worst surfaces on which to drop your device are rough surfaces like asphalt and concrete, and that those unforgiving drops were the critical issue. Once we knew the problem, we could work directly towards solving it. First, we needed to design a test to replicate rough surface drops in the lab. Microscopically examining cover glass broken during our tests, as well as actual field failures, we analyzed flaw sizes responsible for the failures. That analysis told us that a specific grid of sandpaper could be used to best approximate the field's rough landing surfaces in our drop test machine. We then used the drop test machine to uniformly test and compare enhancements to our glass composition. The final result? Gorilla Glass 4, our new formulation, survives real-world drops on rough surfaces up to twice as often as competitive glass designs when dropped from one meter. To put it another way, Gorilla Glass 4 survives drops on rough surfaces 80% of the time and up to two times better than competitive aluminosilicate glass designs. And soda lime glass, as deployed in today's commercial devices, it breaks almost all of the time. So why settle for less? Help protect your device with our toughest cover glass ever, Corning Gorilla Glass 4. See if it's on your device at CorningGorillaGlass.com. You tell him, Victor. GG4's largest competitor in the mobile device screen market is the use of sapphire screens. This was never more obvious than in the months leading up to the announcement of the eventual release of the Apple's iPhone 6 and 6 Plus smartphones in 2014. It has been long rumored that Apple would opt for Sapphire for the cover screen in its newest version of the popular iPhone because of Sapphire's excellent scratch resistance and strength compared to GG4. However, GG4 has two distinct and critical benefits over Sapphire. First, are its shatterproof qualities. It requires three times the force to shatter GG4 when compared to Sapphire. Remember, 
that this was the largest consumer complaint. The second benefit over Sapphire is GG4's low cost of production in comparison to Sapphire. The estimated cost to produce an iPhone 6 6 Plus screen out of GG4 is $3, whereas the estimated cost to produce the same screen out of Sapphire is $30. Researchers also estimate that this cost would decrease over time to near $20 per screen as demand would grow for Sapphire screens as well as manufacturing processes become less expensive. At the end of the day, GG4 was chosen for two reasons. First, because it offered great protection for the largest consumer complaint, screen cracking and shattering. Second, because of its significantly lower cost of production. It was decided that the benefit of Sapphire did not offset the evaluated production cost, which is estimated 10 times that of GG4. Gorilla Glass is a very durable part of most smartphones. It is designed with the consumer in mind. Everyone makes mistakes, and Gorilla Glass will give you a bit of breathe room if your cell phone slips from your grasp, or your dog just so happens to make your new Android its chew toy. This leads consumers to seek out the smartphones that are protected by this amazing substance. Some smartphones utilize a sapphire screen, which is Gorilla Glass's main competitor, as stated before. Gorilla Glass has many useful impacts in today's smartphone age. With a $500 to $600 device in your pocket, it is worth it to know that it won't break when something trivial happens, like a slip from your pocket or a random fit of throwing your device across the room. It creates a peace of mind to the consumer that bought the device that utilizes Gorilla Glass, because even if the screen does break, it does not create sharp, unusable edges that would otherwise make the device dangerous and unusable. Besides smartphones, Gorilla Glass is also used in vehicle windshields. Gorilla Glass has evolved substantially since its creation. So far, it has four generations, with each generation improving on the last. It has since become more durable and scratch resistant. One of the first upgrades that were implemented was to make the glass thinner, but to keep the same strength, thus by using less glass. It has made the price of the Gorilla Glass screens drop. By being more affordable, it has been utilized in many device applications. Following this slide is a video demonstrating the manufacturing process of GG4. As I stated earlier, Gorilla Glass has four generations so far. Generation 1 was strong and scratch resistant. Thus, Apple used it for their first generation of iPhones. Generation 2 improved on Generation 1 by decreasing the thickness on the screens leading to the screens costing less. Generation 3 improved on scratch resistance of the earlier generations by making the screens up to 40% more durable. Generation 4 is the most recent upgrade of Gorilla Glass. It has improved on almost all aspects of the earlier generations by increasing damage resistance and reducing thickness while making the glass flexible. Gorilla Glass has many impressive impacts on the production of devices. It makes the screens harder to scratch, thus getting rid of the integrity compromise that comes with a scratch. By increasing the structural integrity and rooting out weaknesses, Gorilla Glass has become more impact resistant. With the glass being so thin, it already cuts down on the cost of making the product. With lower cost, the final device product that utilizes Gorilla Glass can be sold for less, but still make a profit. 
Following this slide is a comparison between Sapphire and Gorilla Glass in the mobile device market. The enormous amount of speculation over iPhone 6's potential use of Sapphire let us ask the question, how does Sapphire stack up against Gorilla Glass, and will it lead to fewer broken phones? I'm Jason, and this is You Break I Fix Learn. With Apple investing hundreds of millions into GT Advance's Sapphire manufacturing process, it seems clear that we'll see quite a bit of Sapphire in future Apple tech devices. But does it make sense for a smartphone screen? Well, Sapphire is unquestionably hard. It's about a 9 on the most hardest spectrum, where glass is only about a 5.5. Sapphire displays offer unprecedented scratch resistance. We scratch tested Gorilla Glass and Sapphire with a tungsten carbide bit, which is also a 9 on the hardness spectrum. The bit created huge gashes in the glass, but the sapphire screen was completely unaffected. Sounds great. What about the downsides? Sapphire is very stiff, about five times stiffer than glass. So will it really lead to fewer broken screens? To test fracture strength and deformation, the two properties that most influence impact cracks, we used a four point bend test. So then we broke some Gorilla Glass. Then we broke some more. And then we broke some more. After a couple dozen samples, we switched to sapphire. And then of course, we broke some more. With all that test data, we did some fancy math, and we were able to compare the strength and deformation of the samples. From our averages, we found that Sapphire is marginally stronger than Gorilla Glass, about 25% stronger to be exact. In other words, it would take 25% more force to break Sapphire Glass than Gorilla. But that's not the whole story. A material's ability to bend and deform is critical in a fall. And sadly, this is where Sapphire comes up short. You can see from our samples that Sapphire bent far less even though it's much thinner than our glass samples. Average failure strain, the point where the Sapphire actually broke, was about a quarter that of glass. So what does it all mean? It means yes, Sapphire is a bit stronger than glass, but because of its brittleness, we don't think there'll be a net benefit to using Sapphire over glass in terms of impact resistance. And that's really what matters. If you take a look at our video on the Kyocera Brigadier, which has a Sapphire display, Without the phone's strong bezel, the glass breaks on its first drop of just three feet. So what we can say is, Sapphire alone will not likely be more durable than Gorilla Glass, but instead it's the phone and the other features which will help protect it. GG4 may seem great so far, but everything has its disadvantages. One of these disadvantages is the ability to scratch the screens of Gorilla Glass protected devices. Even though it may take a lot to scratch the screen, it is possible to do thus leading to integrity fault in the form of a scratch, which could lead into the screen eventually breaking. Here are a few examples of Gorilla Glass that have been broken. As you can see, the glass may have breaks and tears all through it, but as it remains usable and in one piece without the sharp edges. Only by truly shattering the glass will the edges be formed. But if the screen was damaged to that extent, the device's hardware itself would probably compromise as well. Here are some improvement ideas that would help Gorilla Glass. If they make Gorilla Glass completely scratch proof, then it would lead to less screen compromising accidents. If the screen does scratch, I think the glass should be completely shatter proof. Gorilla Glass is very shatter proof as it is, but making complete shatter proof would eliminate the danger of sharp edges. If Gorilla Glass was made even thinner, it would drive down the cost of devices that it protects. Here are some what others might consider out there ideas that I think would be amazing on a smartphone. If the worst happens and you do somehow shatter your screen, I think it should be repairable either by heat or a bonding agent that would make the screen usable again. It would be convenient to have the screen glare and smudge proof as well, so that the visibility is never an issue even on the brightest of days. And finally, I think there should be an option to give the screen a different color or pattern to make the screen fully customizable. Lastly, I'd like to thank you for viewing our presentation on Gorilla Glass. Also, feel free to view my channel and check out some videos that aren't nearly as boring as this one.